Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's review. I am Prue, and joining me is uh, Mr. Mighty Mango. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well. Hey, you know, if this game had mutant fruit instead of mutant animals, you could have been in it. Uh, yes, I could have been mutant mango. Oh, yeah, that's clever. That's oh, yeah, look at that. So, yeah, because uh, we played a game this week. Yes, we did. We did play a game. We played Mutant Year Zero Road to Eden. It was developed by the Bearded Ladies and published by Funcom. Uh, and it uh, was for sale for thirty four ninety nine, but it's also on Game Pass. So, uh, uh, free. Not really free, yeah. but, you know. Well, by the uh, percentage of how much you pay for Game Pass and the games you get, it's basically free. Basically, yeah. So, um, yeah. so okay, so I feel like this game is kind of complicated. So the easiest way is to say it's an XCOM clone. I, I, that would be the easiest way. Yeah. But there's... I think there's a little bit more searching for stuff, though, where you can have a little bit of free roam yeah. until you get into the battle sequences. Yep. Yeah, so it's... Um, it's interesting, because TA has it classified as... Where to go? Stealth stra uh, and turn-based strategy. And that's yeah. true, but there's a, definitely a heavy dose of RPG in there, um, a little dash of open world. It's 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 pretty... Um, a little, little bit of where they, yeah. I mean, you get the RPG part because they're trying to tell somewhat of a story. Yep. Yeah. And you know, the, your characters, like XCOM, where everybody's just kind of a generic soldier. Like, there's the story, and you you can level up your characters and choose different abilities and that sort of stuff. Um, but the stealth aspect is something that I think is really important to this game because um, you, you can sort of um, place your characters. Uh, in the environment before you start an encounter with the enemies. So uh, as long as you stay sneaky, it, you can use that to your advantage. So it's a pretty significant part of the game. So if you are terrible at stealth games, like Mr. Mighty Mango, <laughs> you will find it very difficult. <laughs> yeah, and if you're bad at stealth games and you're bad at strategy games, I think you're kind of in, you're kind of in trouble. I would, yeah, I'd say. Yeah. Big, big trouble. Because I am not good at strategy games. Like, I enjoyed XCOM, but I didn't beat it even on the easiest setting because I just got frustrated and I kept dying. And um, in this game, I died on the third encounter. So. Oh, yep, I died on the second. Yeah. And crashed. tried over and over and over again. So I don't think the game is necessarily easy. Um, no, not at all. Uh, but it does feel very well polished, I would say. Uh, yeah, I think the production value is very high, minus the font. When you go into the arc that you get to, I think they call it the arc, yep. the little town area, mm -hmm. all the character fonts is very small. It's hard to read. Interesting. I didn't, I didn't, no, it didn't bother me. I didn't notice that. But. Let's see. Well, I, I know I have old man eyes and all, but <laughs> it... it, it it, it just seemed hard to read. It was a little bit too small of a font. I think the font size could be better, a little bit bigger. Interesting. Um, okay. And that's on a 4K TV, 55 inch. So, yeah. So it's not like I'm looking at a small TV and I wasn't sitting that far away, maybe eight feet. So interesting. Okay, maybe it is just your old man eyes. I don't know. It looks small to me. All right. That's hey, fair enough. <laughs> so, but it's pretty otherwise. Yeah, you know, I think it's a really pretty looking game. Um, you play as mutants, unsurprisingly, based on the title. Uh, so, like, um, the one thing that I felt was pretty lazy about this game is that one of the characters that you play as uh, is a duck, and his name is Ducks. Yeah. And I thought, and then the other the the other character that you start with, he's a boar, and his name is like, uh, bo I, I'm not gonna get it wrong. I forget what his name is. Boris or Bor Boron yeah, or yeah, something the, like yeah, that. Yeah, the name the names are very lazy yeah. and you can't change them. <laughs> I'm like, the, like they didn't try at all. But like, anyway, but, but like we're talking about the presentation is really, really good. Um, the graphics are really pretty. Um, I thought it was. Uh, it feels like a AAA game to me. I don't know the studio well enough to say that they're big or not. But they definitely, it definitely feels like it's got that sort of production value behind it. Well, this is the only game on TA that they've done. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I guess Mutant Year Zero is uh, traditionally a. a I think a paper uh, RPG game. I think you are correct. Um, and I think so. This was uh, spun off of that. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's see. Let's talk about the achievements because the, the, these right. are interesting. So, yeah, the achievements. So, uh, we've got 19,190 track gamers have played this, and I'm going to say mostly that's probably because of Game Pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And only 31 have completed it. Yeah. 
points. So the TA ratio is really high. It's worth 6,300 TA. Yeah, it is worth noting that it's um, the game is worth 1,470 gamer score. Correct. And so there is a couple of are they updates or are they? Paid? I think there was a I think there was DLC for it. Yep. Uh, yep. Yeah, there's an add-on, yep. but I don't. I don't see a price. But. There is DLC and there's an, a title update with one achievement worth 10 gamer score. Yep. So that's. But it's the the TA ratio in that game. That one achievement is 16.67. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it looks like, I mean, even if you account for the game pass inflation, it looks like it's probably a pretty challenging completion. Um, it I, does have um, Iron Man difficulty. Oh, is what they call it. Mm -hmm. So it's a permadeath. Yeah, so I, we literally wouldn't have made it past the first mission. Uh, no, if we had. no, we would have been completely dead. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yeah, I would say if you are, and like we talked just a couple weeks ago about Actum, um, and it's interesting that here we are again, another strategy game. Another strategy game. Um, but I would definitely put this, I think, above that in terms of quality. And I would say again the same sort of advice that I gave in that one. If you're if you're a fan of the genre, if you like XCOM that sort of stuff, I think there's a lot here, and uh, I think. It, oh, I, I totally agree. I think it's a very deep game. Yeah. Very deep. Yeah. But. But again, not our cup of tea. And it's frustrating when you when you lose so quickly. You know, especially when you you pick easy mode, and then you're still running into walls right away. It's like, oh god. This is uh, yeah. this isn't good for me, but yeah, well, all strategy games need to be like Command and Conquer. Then I'm then I'm okay. I can do that. But at this game, <laughs> Command and Conquer from like what is it, 25 years ago at this point? Well, yeah, or Red Alert or something like that. Yeah, I think they're are they 25 years? Uh, yeah, maybe I suppose, I, 25. Close to it, I, I imagine. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Is there anything else we want to go over? Because I, I was kind of quick, but I there's I, I don't think so. But yeah, if you're into if you're into this type of strategy, the like XCOM type games, um, want something a little bit different. I don't really... I mean, the game itself is deep. I'm not going to say that the story is deep, because your only goal is to get to Eden by going through things. Yeah. Yeah, the... But it's it's a decent game. It just... Yeah, the the story I felt... I didn't get... You know, I, I didn't beat the game or anything like that, but uh, from what I could tell, the story, story did feel a little generic, although I think... And, like, the world was just sort of generic post-apocalyptic kind of world. But um, the characters are neat. You know, and um, even if they're lazily named, even, yeah, just that—that that was like it—it's it, lazy in general, but it sticks out like a sore thumb in a game of this high quality that's been written very well. Like that, just sticks right out. So, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, it's—we should mention it's um, play anywhere, so you can play it on your computer. If you yeah, playing on PC too. Uh, and obviously, it's in Game Pass. So, yeah, even if you're not huge into this or you never tried it, you could. You could just give it a shot if you have Game Pass, because uh, that's what it's for. Yeah, and it is completable, where uh, Octune had the uh, one achievement that didn't work. This one actually you can finish. Yeah, that's right. And if you're looking for, uh, not necessarily some quick TA, but some juicy TA, you're going to get you're gonna get it in this game. Yeah, I think, yeah, according to TA, the official estimate completion says 20 to 25, but I've seen other estimates because of the Iron Man difficulty, close to 60 hours, so, yeah. So definitely a lot of work to be put in this one. But uh, you could probably do worse, I imagine. So, I think so. All right. Well, that was Mutant Year Zero, Road to Eden. 